Yo, yo, YouTube, what's crack a lack of jack of smack and it's waffle man with a video and the NBA is right around the corner, which means I'm going to stop making NBA videos again on the New York Knicks because you already know I'm one of the biggest New York Knicks fans in the city, but bringing back a series I did last year before the season over and under of course if you bet on gambling sites over and unders is pretty common but over and under for the New York Knicks I'm gonna put it at 30 wins this season now for me 30 wins this season is a tough spot because last year the Knicks won 31 games and you can't forget about the offseason changes every single NBA team made I mean, this was probably one of the most changes we've ever seen in an offseason when it pertains to all-star players. I mean, you had Chris Paul move, Paul George move, Carmelo Anthony move. I mean, the list goes on and on. Isaiah Thomas, Kyrie Irving, Jay Crowder. I mean, listen, Gordon Haywood, Paul Millsap, the list goes on to the amount of team jimmy butler zach it's ridiculous craziest offseason in nba history but the preseason has started and the nba starts a lot sooner than later it starts actually next tuesday so it's way sooner than when it was before when it started near november now it starts in earlier october so the nba players get more rest so two preseason games have happened for the New Yorkers. By the way, Carmelo Anthony, Oklahoma City is having fun over there. Carmelo Anthony, you see Carmelo Anthony moving that ball to rest. You see that ball movement? And people say Carmelo Anthony can't play. He said Carmelo Anthony's going to be done after a season. Man, man, Carmelo Anthony getting buckets. I've been saying this when he was on the Knicks. This man is a problem. Now he's on OKC. Now everyone's jumping on that. Oh, oh. Oh man, it's, it's ridiculous. Only in New York can you get hate. But the next preseason, two games versus the New Jersey Nets or the New York, his two, excuse me, the Brooklyn Nets. And I got to say, even though it's the preseason, listen, the NBA is next week. Jeff Hornacek has not solved the Knicks' number one problem in that defense. Matter of fact, Jeff Hornacek. I believe he said during the offseason that the Knicks were going to try to implement more offense to account for the terrible defense. Oh, it, I mean, listen, the defense was already bad. Hearing that come out of Jeff Hornacek's mouth, this defense is going to be all time bad. I'm telling you, two games versus the new the, the Brooklyn Nets. And they have allowed over 110 points in both of those games. I understand it's the preseason. But can we have a sort of standard around here? Because if the standard's not implemented in the preseason, it's never going to be implemented. It's never going to be a standard of defense for the Knicks. It's got to start this year to implement a type of defense where we're going to be grinding. Like the Memphis Grizzlies. That's the grindhouse. We've got to become a... We're supposed to be rough city over here. But we can't implement a standard of defense. And so far through two games, man, if the Knicks defense is what it looks like it's going to be, listen, they're giving up 100 points to the Brooklyn Nets, who has Jeremy Lin and D'Angelo Russell. That's their two best players. Jeremy Lin, D'Angelo Russell, Allen Crabs off the bench. They got Ronnie Hollis Jefferson in the starting lineup. I forgot who else they got. But Jeremy Lin and D'Angelo Russell, and you're allowing over 100 points to them. Can you imagine them facing the Rockets, facing the Thunder, the Warriors, Celtics, Magic, Sixers? I mean, listen, this team wasn't even that great last season. This season? See, I'm going to go over under 30 wins. I'm going to go under 30 wins, bro. Listen, the Knicks were one of the worst teams in the East last year with the Magic, with the Sixers. Now, I think the Magic still got a little bit of hope because they do got Jeff Green, Nikola Vucevic. They got an all right team. They seem like they compete. The Knicks just don't know what they're doing. By the way, the Sixers are very interesting because, listen, remember last year, the Sixers almost beat the Knicks in the season series. If not for Carmelo Anthony's game-winning shot against the Sixers and those clutch shots from Carmelo Anthony, who I say is on the Thunder right now, the Knicks would have lost that series versus the Sixers. And by the way, 
The Sixers and Knicks games last year were close. Last year, those games were close. And the Sixers didn't just add Marquette Fultz. They also brought in, dare I say, Ben Simmons. And people are projecting Ben Simmons to be the top three candidate for rookie of the year. So I don't see how the Knicks are going to be better than the Sixers, especially when they got Joel Embiid, Marquette Fultz, and Ben Simmons now. I mean, Sixers, are, they're living good right now. Sixers fans are going to be happy watching this season. Knicks fans, I'm telling you right now, we are not getting past 30 wins, man. Every single NBA team, there's not a lot of NBA teams I can say we're confidently going to beat. Even when you take out the teams in the East that don't make the playoffs, like maybe sometimes the Pistons, they still got Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond. I just think the Knicks right now, they're a losing culture. Sure, we added Tim Hardaway Jr. That's cool. We added Michael Beasley. And by the way, it's funny that the Knicks have all these players now when we don't actually really need them. Now, all of a sudden, Carmelo Anthony's gone. We have a lot of depth on this roster. I mean, look, this roster is literally, we got Jared Jack. We got Ramon Sessions, Frank Nilakina, Ron Baker at the point guard. But I mean, goddamn. And then at shooting guard, we got Courtney Lee and Tim Hardaway Jr. Like, that, bro, that right, right there is death right there. And then the big man. The Knicks, the Knicks got way too much big man, man. We got Porzingis, really Hernan Gomez. We got Carlo Quinn still on the team. I don't know why. We, we got Ennis Cantor we picked up from the trade. And this kids are being played as a backup. What? I understand there's a, a couple of teams that need a starting center or a starting power forward like Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor is our backup to really Hernan Gomez. And then we still got Joakim Noah's whopping $72 million contract that Phil Jackson just took a shit on us. And we still got him. So we got five big men on our team. I mean, we still got Mendowski because Minxis, you know. We got Michael Beasley. Michael Beasley, who sometimes, you know, he gets a little bit puff puff. You know, he likes to smoke a little bit of weed. But we also got Michael Beasley. So this team's got, got some good players, man. I mean, solid bench players, solid role players. Now that Carmelo Anthony's left, we have all these solid players. But I really don't think the Knicks are going to get over 30 wins man i mean listen every time i think the knicks are gonna go over the win ratio that they they are supposed to go over they don't go over it man i mean let's just be real they're just a bad team but let me know what you think in the comment section man will the knicks get over 30 wins or will they get under 30 wins of course i'm going to under man i mean listen 30 wins a lot of you probably say well 30 wins is possible they can't win 30 wins this is going to be the first year Porzingis is going to be the number one option. I don't think he's ever felt like that before. So it's going to be even difficult for him. But anyways, man, leave a like for more. I'm out for now. Peace.